I click the button. It is done. Okie dokie. Okay. So, um, this is our first session, so that's cool. And I guess your goals for chess are to just become a proficient starting player so that you can start to teach yourself, right? After like 10 hours. Pretty much. Okay. Um, that makes sense to me. And my plan then is to give you kind of an overview of what are the, the important topics in chess and mm -hmm. to hit some of the, the major roadblocks that people usually have to get between like lost beginner and a player who's able to sustain their development. So mm -hmm. I have a bunch of topics in mind and some of that is informed by seeing your games on, on live chess. And, That's embarrassing. Well, no, no. I mean, I looked at all the games that you played in the last like two weeks. I didn't didn't go any sure. further back than that. And it's still embarrassing. <clears throat> I mean, it's always embarrassing. I don't. It, it's funny because like I stream chess, but I don't really like it when people watch my games and stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, fair. It, I think it's just people like us probably always feel that way. Um, there are a lot of good things, and I noticed a few. Well, actually, let's, let's focus on one of the good things. One of the, one of the good things is that I noticed that you were you were training a lot of the light chess modules already, so mm -hmm. you're working on the available free material, and working yeah. on tactics, which is usually what people will recommend. You know, if you just went on like a Reddit forum or something and said, "I'm new to chess, help," they'll be like, "Solve some tactics puzzles, learn your tactics," and they might even make some bold statement like, "Tactics will get you to 1800." Like they'll give you a, a high rating. And um, uh -huh. that's largely true, um, but there are maybe more efficient ways to get to those ratings than to just grind tactics nonstop. Um, right. Anyway, it's good because one of the first things that I'll usually do if someone's a complete beginner, well, not complete beginner, complete beginner is like you can't move the pieces. Um, mm -hmm. But let's suppose you know all the rules of chess, you're like super familiar, but you're stuck mm -hmm. right there. Um, the first thing I would do is usually show people like how do you do pins how do you do skewers? How do you do double attacks? Mm -hmm. And then go from sure. there. But I think okay. you've gotten yourself just beyond that point, which is good. I, I know how to apply them just in the puzzles, but, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to hard. set up for these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's focus on some, some strategic ideas. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, with how you start the game, because if, if I start in with um, like the basic checkmates with just a few pieces, probably you're never going to get into those situations at the moment because mm -hmm. you would need to get a sizable advantage from the beginning and I want to help you uh, come out of the gate uh, with a good position. So first let's talk about opening principles. I made a video some time ago about uh, opening principles and you can think about it in various ways. Is that Kali? Yes, this is Kali. <laughs> now, does Kali ever fight Winston? I feel like that would be good background uh. content. <laughs> like I feel fights. like she only bites if provoked or if she's like got excess energy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Caitlin has two cats now, and they have like little cat duels, so I kind of like <laughs> yeah. that. Um, anyway, so three opening principles. I made a video about that, but in brief, um, one of the important principles is that you should get out all of your pieces. You should use yep. all of your pieces. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll say you should invite all of your pieces to the party. And that's something mm -hmm. that I noticed from your games, you're not doing that, so I'll show you some efficient mm -hmm. ways to do so. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is to control the center. Yeah. And do you know which squares people call the center already? Is, is that just the hill in the middle with D through E, 4, and 5? Yes. This mm -hmm. is our center. Sure. And the things that are like close to it are also important in a similar way. It's kind of like it kind of goes out from there. like. Mm -hmm. All the squares are important in different ways, but a pretty good heuristic technique is just to control these four a lot. Not just one time, okay. but with all of your pieces several times. Okay. So that's another good one. Um, and the last thing is that you should castle as quickly mm -hmm. as you can. So right. castle early, castle often is something I like to mm -hmm. say, because it's a little silly. You know, you can only castle once in a chess game. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, so when we consider these um, ideas all together, you can make a checklist for how good is your move in general. Obviously, right. obviously any given move that you pick um, could be good for all three of the reasons I just mentioned because it helps you control the center, it wakes up your sleeping pieces, it helps you to castle, but then you can get checkmate on the next move. So there's a, there's a concrete element 
where you need to not blunder into losing your pieces or getting checkmated. Mm -hmm. But when those things are not going on, you need to follow these principles for the first, yeah. like, maybe 10, 15 moves. So let's see some uh -huh. examples. Um, first of all, let's consider um, the move E4. Uh -huh. Based on this uh, three criterion checklist, um, how do you think this move is? Does it control the center? Yep. All right. Does it help you to develop your pieces? Yep. Yes. And does it help you to castle? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does all three. Well, mm -hmm. All right. What reservation do you have about it? It's a bit indirect for allowing castling, since it is just allowing castling by allowing the bishop out. Yeah. The, the castling concept is a little bit indirect. Like, whenever you're thinking yeah. about, does this help me castle? It's, it's always mm -hmm. going to be kind of like, yeah... Because it's not like you're actually castling on that move. It's just like you're preparing. Um, mm -hmm. But don't worry about that. Even if it seems really indirect, it's still important. I, I should also mm -hmm. add that this move in particular is nice because, first of all, it doesn't have any downside compared to other moves like knight f3. Mm -hmm. um, you might think this is more direct, but how are you going to get the bishop out? Yeah, exactly. Eventually you need to play a move with either the e-pawn or the g-pawn. It doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. it's as direct as knight f3 is. Um, the other nice thing about it is that this is actually part of the fastest way to castle. So, mm -hmm. how many moves minimum does it take to castle? Including the Three castling Three before move. you... Oh, okay, so four. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, what might your sampling move... Your sample four moves be? Like, let's say e4. What else would you pick? Uh, then... Bishop... c4, and then knight f6. Knight f3. Three, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then our then our castling move itself. Good. So this is mm -hmm. four, and so how many moves does it take to castle queenside? Uh, an additional one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we have our kingside castling and your queenside castling. Do you already know that terminology? Yeah, I know that there's also this different notation for it. So like yeah. it's o o when it's not queenside. Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's oo woo if you go queenside. So. <laughs> okay. Right. So these are our four. Um, and. So based on our opening principles, which way of castling do you think is preferable, at least from a b beginner standpoint, kingside or queenside? Probably kingside. Why? Uh, it just happens earlier, and then you can worry about developing the rest. Yeah, it happens faster. And when, when you're just starting out, castling quickly is important. Mm -hmm. um, so a little anecdote here. I, I had a student um, some time ago who followed this advice to a fault obviously you can't do that mm -hmm. i would regularly yeah, play yeah. a game against him where it's like i'm playing black for example i play d5 he plays mm -hmm. knight f3 i take this he plays bishop c4 <laughs> i take this he castles yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i'm like no and then you just keep <laughs> yeah. Th these opening principles apply when there's no immediate problem on the board so don't forget right. about that mm -hmm. of course it, it's difficult to see certain kinds of problems and, and we'll get into that mm -hmm. okay now how about the move um let me pick another one. Let's say we pick the move F4. How's this size up as an opening move? Um, I would think that this is more for high-level stuff that doesn't really apply to the basic heuristics. So, in which ways is it good as an opening move? I you still... Setting up to maybe capture something on the five row, maybe. So center control just for e5. Right. Mm -hmm. And is it good for but development then, or castling? Uh, it's not great, but you are also opening up. Uh, let's say. Uh, e and g3 to just make your little pyramid boy. Yeah. So that that leads to more Eventually casting you can castle. <laughs> but that would be like castling in six moves or something, right? Because to yeah. make this pyramid of doom, you might mm -hmm. even call it like um, the pyramid that Nicolas Cage will one day be, be buried in. Do you know about that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He owns a pyramid in New Orleans. Anyway, um, <laughs> which is quite strange. Um, we, we can talk about that more later. But sure. um, so F4 doesn't directly contribute to the castling. So no. it, it puts you somewhat at risk. Uh, mm -hmm. Additionally, this move in particular runs into some problems because it opens up the king on this diagonal, 
and right. we'll see in a little while why that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but just on the basis that it's not contr- it's not developing your pieces and it's not preparing castling, you could consider this move inferior to, for example, e4. So mm-hmm. this introduces some notion of comparison for your opening moves. This can help you to decide what order to do things in. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, so this this move f4 is sometimes called the bird's opening. It's named after a guy named Henry Bird from like 200 years ago. You know, one of those quintessential yeah, yeah. old dead white men. And yeah, yeah. it's it's like it's okay, but it's it's considered disreputable even at a very high level. Generally, grandmasters mm-hmm. are not playing birds opening unless it's a very fast time control where they can get away with nonsense. So these mm-hmm. beginner principles they'll probably serve you for your, the entire time that you play chess. It's not okay, necessarily cool. that like you'll graduate from this and they're no, no. longer valid. They're, they're always good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think we could look at the move D3 next. So okay. how does this one size up? Um, You're not exactly controlling the center, but you're at least allowing for the bishop to be opened. Okay. But um, otherwise, I think I, I see this more often as a defense rather than an opening. So do you see this as like just doing two out of the three opening things or all three? Hmm. I would say 1.5 because I mean, you can only move the the queen forward, and then if that's there already, then you can't move your bishop out. How would you castle from here, fat? Uh, black, assuming black doesn't do anything. Okay. Um, bishop f4. Okay. And then queen does a little bounce forward, and then the knight goes wherever, but preferably not the side. Yeah, probably c3 to control the center, mm-hmm. and then you're casting right. on the next move. So mm-hmm. this setup's not that bad, but you you did hit on an important point that why shouldn't you just play d4? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I'm playing white, I generally will prefer to control the deepest center square that I can because it also right. restricts your opponent's options. When you play mm-hmm. a move like d3, you know I, I could play, um, for instance, e5 with, with no problem, but if you had played d4, I can't really play e5 mm-hmm. without losing the pawn, which is not so good. Sometimes you can do it, but not in this case. Mm-hmm. Okay, so d3 is actually not a terrible move, but it's definitely mm-hmm. inferior when you compare it with like d4. So mm-hmm. um, let's look at a, a model game just to illustrate some, some opening principles. This game okay. was played in probably like 1620 or so. Mm-hmm. It's a very old game. Um, you might recall that the the modern rules for chess were were more or less tacked down in the 1500s so mm, okay people have been playing chess like games for thousands of years before that but like the way we play now is is pretty recent mm-hmm. um, okay so in this game the guy playing white is named greco Joachino greco mm-hmm. and he's an italian dude um member mm-hmm. of the aristocracy has time to play chess right. and he's able to write so the reason that I even know about this guy is he wrote down uh, a good many of his games and they mm-hmm. just survived and now now we know about them um, okay so his opponent in this game and he wrote down all of his opponents as no name you know he put NN because <laughs> okay. in the uh, sort of male chauvinistic tradition back then you didn't want to uh-huh. disgrace your opponent by like sharing their name when you're analyzing their game ah uh, so okay pretty strange but interesting historically Mm-hmm. Um, so let's criticize them. Uh, e4, we already know that's a reasonable move. Um, right. How about this move, b6? Uh, so now the... Yeah, they're not controlling the center. Their rook is vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And even though they can sort of pop out the bishop, it's not going to be in the right direction. Well, I don't think it's necessarily the wrong direction. Where were you thinking? Um... Oh, yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter for a bishop since they like the back row anyway. Yeah, they're really good from far away, so it doesn't matter. So would you prefer a6 Mm -hmm. or b7? Um, Probably a6. How come? Well, not not from this position, but in general, just that file. Just so that it prevents the king from moving that way. Oh yeah, that would be Otherwise. cool if for some reason they can't castle. But 
it's sort of a, a rarer instance. For example, mm -hmm. even if my bishop is gone, let, let's say I did something ridiculous, mm -hmm. like um, maybe let's do something kind of slow, like knight c3. Yeah. You you do knight a6, and then I perform this foolish operation, where yeah. I help you develop your piece quickly, and mm -hmm. in addition, I give up my bishop so I can't castle anymore. Yeah. Even in this weird situation, I think white is still doing fine. What do you think white should do to try to castle quickly from here? Mm. I guess... If it's quickly, then it still has to be kingside. So yeah. they would still go knight f3 and then do something to take care of the bishop, which I'm not sure about. Try to figure it out. It's okay. important to be able to solve uh, these kinds of problems at the board. Yeah. Um, so let's say let's say we're married to the idea of knight f3. Let's yeah. Pretend that that's one of our moves. Mm -hmm. And maybe black will play something like um, you know just any developing move like knight f6 or e6 or something. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess you could make like the. That's not really fast though. I was thinking of maybe the diagonal of doom on the left with the pawns, but. That does sound pretty slow. Otherwise, just throw the queen away. No, don't throw the queen away. You don't want to do anything <laughs> drastic like that unless you get like sure. serious, serious comeuppance. Uh -huh. There's a very okay. simple solution. So let's think about okay. it. The bishop's controlling all of these lines. Yeah. This is the problem that we we can't go mm -hmm. here. Is there any ah, way? Ah, to... okay. So just put the knight back into the space in front of the king. Is that it? Yeah, we could do that. There's another way that helps you get out more pieces. There's there's another principle here that you don't really ah, want to so move the same piece. you can just use times. the knight to fill that space in front of the king, and then it becomes safe. Well, you could do that, but it's slow because we already got this piece out. Right? right. So I'd rather try to get more pieces involved and also solve my problem. So instead of knight f three, were you meaning like knight e two? Yeah, you could do that. So this is one option. This is mm -hmm. the fastest. This is kind of what I was okay. fishing for in the first place. That you right. do this. And then they mm -hmm. do something in Newcastle, and everything's happy in the world. Like maybe, mm -hmm. let's just pretend they play like e6. Yeah. There, you're done. But mm -hmm. if you really want to do this, because it controls the center better, because it controls mm -hmm. two squares, um, you still have a way of solving your problems in this case. So let's say they play e6 again. There's another okay. solution that's not like throwing the queen, and it's okay. Not uh, then it's back. just d3. Right. So do you see why this one's better than like knight e2? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then that pawn's also supported by the one behind it. Yeah, and there's another one that's even more important. Another reason. Uh, oh, and then you're also supporting the top pawn for from capture from I guess if the pawn were to, or if the black pawn were to move to d5. Yeah, the e pawn coming into danger is very hypothetical because we defend mm -hmm. it super well. Um, yeah, yeah, true. But there's one more thing that's even more important than either of those two. More than safety of the pawns. Mm -hmm. Remember, in the opening, we want to wake up all the pieces and develop fully, right? So does the mm -hmm. does playing d3 help with the development in any way? Ah, oh, yeah, so now your bishop's open and it can go... Yeah, exactly. So here you have two probably equally good options. You can do a, a one-move slower way, where you put the knight on a, on a slightly better square, and you wake up your bishop, and then you can castle anyway. Or mm -hmm. you can block and castle as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So these are both good options. Okay. So in that sense, putting the bishop on a6, it would be desirable if for some reason white had played many moves that sabotaged their ability to castle. Mm -hmm. But that would require them to play d4 and lose this knight somehow and not be able to block with this knight. You see how it's, like, it's taking too many, there's too many criteria here for that to be right. useful. Mm -hmm. In that sense, it's more useful to just play bishop b7. Mm -hmm. Because when you play bishop b7, you're controlling the center, which is one of our opening principles. Yeah. So this sequence of moves is not ridiculous. Like, b6 doesn't control the center, but it does mm -hmm. help you to get your bishop to control the center. But since it only does, like, you could maybe say it's like two out of three of the good things, b6 is definitely inferior to an option like well, I don't know. What would you play here for black? Um, 
probably F5. F5? Yeah. F5 is the mirror image of F4, right? So how does that shape up for your opening principles? Is it control is controlling the center, right? But it, does it help you castle? Does it wake up your pieces? Not really. No. So oh, okay, I see. Not. Yeah. So, so probably just go for the pretty typical, I guess, uh, E5. Yeah, absolutely. E5 is fine. Mm -hmm. Almost yeah. every single move is fine. But mm -hmm. I like this one, especially if you're starting out, because E5 is very simple. You are yeah. controlling the center as much as you can, you know, deep in their territory. Mm -hmm. You're waking up multiple pieces, right? They have all these new options, including the knight. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have a new option for the king, but like, you know, <laughs> it has it. Um, mm -hmm. And you're castling fast. So this would be better than b6 right. if, if we're just considering these these principal ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, next move that Greco played was d4. Mm -hmm. Just as good as e4, right? Yeah, I guess. But does it... Does it matter that you have two that are directly next to each other on the hill? Why not? Uh... I think it seems really good. Because okay. together they build a wall. Yeah, true. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they both activate both of the bishops. So mm -hmm. we're fully utilizing the pieces. Yeah. Um, but what, what could you be worried about here? Like maybe the pawn's getting vulnerable? Yeah, that, and then, um, I guess I'm used to seeing other beginners, you know, like, just occupy one color with their pawns, so mm -hmm. that it creates some, like, some zigzag or checkerboard pattern. As you get stronger, you'll see that usually putting all of your pieces to control one color means you're weak on the other color. Right. And so <laughs> if you can control both colors simultaneously, that's generally mm -hmm. optimal. There are situations where one color is much more important than the other, but but mm -hmm. typically those kinds of positions become like extremely sharp attacking positions right away. And okay. since we're just developing the pieces in the opening, we're not in one of those situations yet. Mm -hmm. So that's something for you to look forward to. But right okay. now, I don't think there's any merit in just like putting everything on light or everything on dark as a strategy. Sure. So in in this case, it's like the the center squares are uncontested and you can just throw that one out there yeah exactly you're uncontested okay. and you're controlled the center which is really really nice hey cool when i was a beginner i used to push four pawns <laughs> and i would just like full full court press and i had a yeah. lot of success because in order to dismantle the strategy of the full court press with the pawns it, it takes some precision you have to know to attack it from the sides provoke the pawns to advance mm -hmm. and fix them and that's an mm -hmm. that's a sort of advanced technique um, I don't mm -hmm. recommend it for you because it's not sustainable. As you get stronger, eventually, like, the full court press mm -hmm. with four pawns will become an exploitable strategy. Um, so, mm -hmm. in the meanwhile, I think this is good. Just two okay. pawns in the center, if they let you. Sure. So, next they play bishop b7. Mm -hmm. I think this is very logical if you play b6, so let's not mm -hmm. criticize it too much. Um, and Greco played bishop d3. Mm-hmm. How's this move? Does it control the center, develop pieces, castle? Yep. All three, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's very good. Now, in this position, black violated these three opening principles in an egregious way. Yeah. They played f5, which is a move that you suggested earlier, and also a move uh -huh. that I saw you play in some of your games in the last two weeks. So this is probably yeah. a very instructive moment for you. Mm -hmm. um, but... Greco's opponent was not a bad player. They had a reason behind their their choice, even mm -hmm. though it it doesn't control the center or develop their or develop their right. pieces or castle very well. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you think their idea was? Let's just pretend that we're gonna take this pawn. What do you think Black wants mm -hmm. to do? Mm. So now we're we're practicing uh, imagining what it's like to be the opponent, which is a very important right. skill for chess. So that happens, then. Then you're taking uh, White's control away from the center. Right. So you're distracting that pawn at the price of a pawn. Mhm. Mm so what do you think Black wants to do to justify it aside from the center control? Do you um, think they can get their material back in any way? Ah, uh, yeah. Probably they'd be attacking G two to threaten 
the rook. Yeah, exactly. So, of course, Greco went ahead and took this pawn mm -hmm. and lost his pawn on g2. Mm -hmm. So, Greco's a loser. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, the, the reason that he did this is actually because it's in accordance with the opening principles. It, it turns out that because black has violated the opening principles so much, there's no way that their mm -hmm. position can be tenable. Yeah. So at this point, um, we can actually switch from thinking about just developing the pieces and controlling the mm -hmm. center to actually attacking the king. White mm -hmm. has a good enough position to think about that now. Mm -hmm. So um, what, there's another useful uh, mnemonic device. I've also made a video about this. Um, mm -hmm. It's the checks captures threats mnemonic. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes okay. I call it CCT. And what that means is when you're thinking about tactics or any kind of forcing play, mm -hmm. you need to think first about how you can check the king. Mm -hmm. Then you need to think about what are all the captures that are possible. And then you need to think mm -hmm. about threats. Threats are much harder. So usually when people are beginning, I say just think about checks and, checks and captures. Okay. But you shouldn't just randomly check the king just because no, you can if it doesn't give not. you an advantage. Okay. The, re the reason you do the CCT is to develop an awareness of the position. So mm -hmm. it's, it's to help you search for moves that are worth considering, not just to find a move to right. play. Okay. So, so let's do it in this position. Do we have any checks captures that are useful or interesting? Yeah, there's a queen d5, but I'm not sure if it's useful. You mean queen h5? Yeah, queen h5. <laughs> queen d5 would be the yeet maneuver. <laughs> Very strong way to lose your queen in one move. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So in a chess tournament, if your opponent makes an illegal move, they have to put it back but then also follow uh -huh. the touch move rule if they can. But I think yeah, they recently yeah. changed the rule so that in Blitz, if your opponent makes an illegal move, you can just let it stand, like, two moves <laughs> later. So you can, like, <laughs> let them play Queen D5 and just take it and be, like, celebrating. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a ridiculous rule change. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there's Queen H5. Um, do you think it's worth looking at other options before we analyze this one, or do you want to start seeing what the consequences are? Ooh, um... I don't think I see any other direct checks right now. Mm -hmm. And there's also no captures. So yeah. this is really the only move that's worth considering. Sure. Um, sometimes when, when you are uh, calculating what to do in a chess game, it's good to follow mm -hmm. your intuition a little while. Like if a move seems really promising, mm -hmm. um, you should give it a little bit of calculation on the front end. You don't always have to like rigidly always like make a list of moves to look at and always do the checks captures threats you know if something looks good mm -hmm. you can just start analyzing but yeah, if you start to good. find problems with that you can back up and then try to use these mnemonic devices mm -hmm. again okay so let's say we play queen h5 what do you think black mm -hmm. is going to do uh can they do anything they can Keep looking. Oh, okay. Uh, the G6. Yes, they can only play G6. And just yeah. to help you practice your visualization, I'm not going to move anything for now. Okay. So they, they play G6. Uh -huh. um, what do you think white should do in that position? With that... <coughs> hmm. Well, I definitely shouldn't take it, but... You should not? Is that what you said? Yeah, I shouldn't take the, the pawn, because then you're just throwing your queen. Or are you? If you take No, you're not. The, if you take with the queen, that's true. <laughs> How are they going to capture yeah. your queen? Uh, With the pawn at h7. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. if you take with the queen, that's true. But you have other options. Okay, so then... The search for options, I call it the candidate move search. So, it, <laughs> again, it's a good time for the checks, captures, threats, but of course you can include okay. other moves in your search. Yes. So... Wow, my brain feels super smooth right now. It's okay. This I don't think you've, be you've really thing. done anything like this before, right? You'll, you'll get better at it as we go. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, um, when, we're, when we're done with this, I'm going to make uh, a custom worksheet for you, and I'll send it to you so you can solve it during the week, and we can discuss oh. it later on. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, oh, well, then I would just capture with the, the pawn at f5, I guess. Yeah, I think that's super logical, because if you if you retreat your queen, you're going to lose mm -hmm. the rook, 
if you yeah. do something passive, they can just take your queen. So mm -hmm. taking the pawn is is super logical. Um, what do you think Black would do in that position? Black would probably want to take back because that's a very far in pawn, and then it would also be attacking the queen. Yeah, that makes sense. I, but I think but White then has an they easy could solution. also just take the the rook at h1. At h8. You mean like uh, white would take a rook or black? Black. Oh yeah, so they they could also do that. Um, mm -hmm. So, but I think it was white's move in that position. So we said queen h5, oh, g6, okay. yeah. pawn takes, and you suggested that they take back, right? So they yes. can't take the rook yet. No. So when they take this and attack your queen, what are you going to do? Uh. This is already a little bit deep, but I think it's good to push yourself <laughs> here. <laughs> I'd probably still take back because then I force a check again. Right. Yeah. Do, do they have any okay. anything to do after that? Uh, I I don't see anything, no. <laughs> no, there's nothing. It's checkmate. In fact you have two different oh, checkmates. So okay. what are the two checkmates in that position? Uh <laughs> Well which one were you thinking so if of just now? Oh, okay, yeah. So I was just thinking of the queen one because the queen was already there, but mm -hmm. there is also the bishop. Yeah, right. And it accomplishes the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have two different checkmates there. This is a really encouraging sign. Whenever I see something like this, um, I like to follow the path a little bit more. I don't usually back up right. and look for other options when I have something so promising. So mm -hmm. black actually cannot take on g6. Mm -hmm. So probably their idea was to take the rook, like what you said earlier, right? Mm-hmm. So, if they take the rook, what are you going to play? Um, I'll probably just sacrifice my bishop anyway, since I have the queen How ready to that? attack the same diagonal. What move? I'm not sure so, how you're going to sacrifice it. Oh, so they didn't take my pawn, right? No, they did not. Then I would take theirs. And what would they play? Hmm. Do you see anything for them to play? Um, I guess they would just then maybe try to take the rook. I'm not sure, though. Well, they already took it in this line. Here. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So I'll play a couple moves just to help out. Sure. All right, so they took here. And you uh -huh. were saying to take their pawn, right? Yes. What are they going to play after you take the pawn? After the pawn? Uh, I guess they feel threatened a bit with the, the knight, and then they'd probably use that to attack the queen. But they actually aren't allowed to. See, when oh, this, yeah. When this pawn moves, it's check. Uh huh. So this this is called discovered check. Oh right. It's, it's a very very okay, powerful so, tool. Okay, so so then. That's yeah, it. it looks like the only thing they can do is cry. <laughs> yeah, they can only cry. <laughs> exactly. So this is actually checkmate, and you have another checkmate mm -hmm. in this position too. You could take on h seven checkmate, and what's the other one? Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, I could just move the pawn forward. Yeah, this is also mate. Nice. Yeah. So these are our options. I, I kind of like the one where we don't take anything. Just, it, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is the refutation for their idea to take the rook. And this mm -hmm. shows that black really, really messed up. They violated the opening principles, especially mm -hmm. in this case, the idea that you should develop new pieces on every move if you can. Mm -hmm. Making too many moves in a row with the same piece can be fatal. In this case, if they move the bishop three times, they get checkmated. Mm, so you should yeah. be aware of that. Like if you ever do things like that in your own game, you should just be cautious. Okay. Sometimes it's permissible. Sometimes you have to, but mm -hmm. just try to figure out if you're doing it because you're being materialistic or because like it improves your position. Mm -hmm. Now, black played g6. This is how the game went. Pawn takes g6, but then they played this tricky move, knight f6. Mm-hmm. 
And here, white can win by force in two moves, but it's quite difficult. Right. But I still think you can do it, so let's try. White to play and win in two moves. This is kind of like a puzzle moment. You know, you might find a puzzle yeah. like this on Light Chess where <laughs> you don't know what you're supposed to do, but you know there's something great because it's because mm -hmm. they're showing it to you, right? Um, in such situations, it's good to focus on the, the captures and checks. Mm -hmm. Those are almost always the components of a, a tactical answer in the puzzle okay. set you're seeing. Um, I'd probably go with moving the pawn forward. To G7? Yeah. Okay. What do you think black will do? Uh, take the queen. They have to. And you yeah. need to win now, because it's, it's mm -hmm. move two. So do you have a win? Uh, I guess I don't. <laughs> you have an interesting move. You can take the rook and make a queen. Mm -hmm. But it's unclear, because they could also yeah. take your rook for free at that point. Mm -hmm. So let's back up. What other options do you have? What other candidate moves are there? Oh, I I don't think that works, but it's still interesting. Yeah, G seven is interesting, but it didn't work. Yeah, no. Um, do you think it makes sense to to move the queen? The moment. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if if the pawn moves, then it's a check. But then uh, I don't know what else I would move to force another check. Unless the next move is just setting up for the checkmate. Yeah, maybe your first move has to set up the checkmate somehow. Okay. Um... Just to help calibrate your intuition. If you mm -hmm. move the queen, this is giving black a free hand. It's not necessarily posing them any special issues. Because at right. that point, they don't have to worry about their king getting checked on the light squares. They mm -hmm. could probably take your rook on h1 or do something different. Like, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. at that point. So, okay. it's kind of now or never. Uh-huh. G7 didn't uh, work. So what's the other move that stands out as a way to attack the king? Uh... There's only two ways to check in this position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the other one would just be capturing with the pawn, I guess. Okay, and black has to do the same thing. Knight takes h5, right? Yeah. And what's your next move? Uh Oh, then I can move the bishop Right. over, and then it's no longer in danger. <laughs> this is harder to find. It's the right uh -huh. answer, and it's also how the game ended. Mm-hmm. This is hard oh. to find because it involves a more high-level tactic called a square clearance. Mm -hmm. You want to use the g6 square, but you yeah. need to remove the defender of that square and make it available. So that's mm, a little bit sophisticated. Okay. Yeah. Just a general note, I think that it's good to go slow. Slow is better when you're doing your chest training. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter like what level you're at. Slow is a good thing. So nice. We got this one done. So I showed oh. you this to illustrate the, the idea that you should try to use all of your pieces. Mm -hmm. in, in this case, white didn't have to finish their development because mm -hmm. black gave them an opportunity to win the game immediately. But right. right before that, they built up a nice position by controlling the center fully. Mm -hmm. And black didn't contest the center properly. Right. I had an ulterior motive in showing this particular example, though. Because one of the really important things when you're first learning chess is to become mm -hmm. aware of these kinds of attacks mm -hmm. on this diagonal in particular, yep. as well as checkmates that occur on f7. And this mm -hmm, kind of segues mm -hmm. into that. Oh, so, is that the fried liver thing? <laughs> no, it's the scholar's mate and uh, the fool's okay. mate. Let's do a thought experiment first. I'm going to add a couple chapters here. If you'll just give me mm -hmm. a second. Um... How am I going to do it? Okay. It's going to be a weird thought experiment. Mm -hmm. So in this diagram, it's the same as the starting position, except I've removed the D-pawn. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine that um, black gets the attack on the king right away for free. Let, mm -hmm. Maybe I could um, edit the position again. No, I'll just add some extra moves. So let's pretend that they play, like, some nonsense moves. 
like this. And now the White King is in danger. <laughs> just, yeah. just as a thought experiment. Yeah, how yeah. bad is it that the deep pawn is gone? Like, how many ways do we have to save our king? I, I can see three. What are they? But, uh, so there's c3, uh, rook d2. Or, um, not rook, bishop d2. Right. <laughs> uh, queen d2. Rook d2. Okay, and queen d2. <laughs> you have two more that you missed. Oh, okay. Uh... Oh, there's also knight c3. And? And... Oh, uh, knight d2. Right. So these are five ways to save your king. That's a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So that means that a lot of things need to go wrong for someone to actually lose the game to a check on like b4 or a5 on the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now let's, let's go to the next um, iteration of this thought experiment, silly thought experiment. Mm -hmm. All right, White's King is in check right now from the front. I removed the E pawn and I just flew a rook in, airdrop, it's on E6 now. Mm -hmm. um, so same deal, how many ways do we have to rescue this king? Two, not those. I see two, three. Three. What yeah, are so they? Um, queen e2, uh, bishop e2, and also knight e2. Right. So three. Not a lot of ways, but you would still need kind of a more than a minor disaster to not have a way to block the check here. And I should add that blocking is usually the best, especially blocking with pawns. That's something mm -hmm. that you can immediately incorporate in your game. So if someone checks you and you can block with a pawn, that is usually pretty great. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the next part of our silly thought experiment, you probably already know what's what's coming at this point. Oh, I messed it up a little bit. <laughs> Let's add a couple silly moves here. Okay, sure. All right. So the king's oh, no. in check. How many ways yeah. do we have to save the king? One. So there's g3. There is... There's G3. <laughs> there's G3 and there's G3. Yes, that's it. So we have only one. So how easy do you think it is for there to be a disaster on this diagonal? Very. Very, yes. very easy. So this is also part of why you should generally not move the F pawn in the opening. It opens you up for this kind of mm -hmm. special disaster that's sort of baked into the cake of how chess is set up. So let's see. So on either you know, side, is that true? On either oh, okay, side, yeah. yes. It applies mm -hmm. almost equally well. In fact... Um, possibly a counterintuitive example. Um, the first side that can give a checkmate in chess mm -hmm. is black. Mm -hmm. This means that when you go first, you have the first chance to make an error. Um, yeah. I've seen many games start like this. Actually, let, let's see one of my games um, from when I was okay. in university. When, okay. when I was a freshman, I think, I traveled to Princeton for a tournament. And I played against one of Princeton's teams. And my opponent started with F3. Mm -hmm. I was very suspicious because, um, uneducated though I was, I, I, had, I knew from experience that this was not a good idea to play F3. Mm -hmm. So um, what move would you play here for black to try to open up chances to exploit F3? Mm. Probably... Not sure if... Uh... E5 or G5, but probably... One makes much more sense than the other. Think yeah, about yeah, the three E5 openings. is probably yeah. much better. <laughs> E5, be bold, be brave. We, we control the center, we develop our pieces. Mm -hmm. And right. even if we're hoping that they do something ridiculous on the next move, this move is objectively mm -hmm. good. So okay. we don't really need to hope for anything. Now my opponent's next move was G4. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, what was the next move? <laughs> Queen... Uh h4 yes this is the this is called fool's mate it's the fastest way that you can uh -huh. lose in chess uh. and as black you can do the same thing let's well, it, it just takes a move longer um uh -huh. you play f5 um i'm trying to think of a, a sort of reasonable move order here uh d4 because you have to wait for them to play something stupid mm -hmm. sure. play g5 and now what's our move for white 
The same. So queen d uh, not d <laughs> h5. Yes. So it's the same deal. So this is a fatal error that happens on the diagonal, and we mm -hmm. need to keep that pawn on f7. This is another thing that's just super useful when you're first starting out. Yeah. And in the Do you just get free wins against people who are just starting with this? Yeah, scrubs sometimes give free wins just like that. <laughs> you know, like they start pushing every pawn across the board, and eventually mm -hmm. they, they hit those two, and then they lose. <laughs> um, it's really funny, but also okay. sad. And I hope that they all watch <laughs> my videos and don't do it ever again. So um, let's see something that's a little bit more sophisticated. And this is the mm -hmm. Scholar's Mate and Lightning mm -hmm. Attack. Uh, okay, new chapter. So this is a must know if you're a starting player. You've already heard of the scholars meet, probably, right? Yeah. Okay. So it, it's a must know because first of all, you can Google this. So many people who don't know anything about chess, um, they mm -hmm. might just go hit the Google how to win mm -hmm. quickly in chess. Click on the first thing that they see, <laughs> and it's yeah. almost guaranteed to be scholars meet. Um, I've never mm -hmm. actually Googled it, so I don't know for sure, but. It's probably a scholar's mate video. Mm -hmm. um, it's super easy to do in the sense that um, if you have a relentless focus and resolve on attacking this one particular square, eventually your opponent might just let you do it. Um, but the the problem with it and the reason you don't see it at the top level or even in the mid level is it's, it's not forced by any means. So uh, let's just see how it happens. It starts with some good opening moves, which... I recommend for you for both white and black mm -hmm. and um, the suspicious activity will usually begin with a queen move okay let's say this one we're gonna see a bunch okay. of different versions of this mm -hmm. and in the process also get some practice with checkmate and defending against checkmate mm -hmm. so when you see this move it's quite sus but mm -hmm. there's no reason to panic because um, how does this move check out with your um, opening principles like that fits it does yeah i mean it's still controlling or it's defending e4 yeah and you are setting up for a queenside castle right. which is a little slow but still still castling mm -hmm. and it develops your and pieces then, kind of. right exactly so there's a there's a caveat usually when people say develop your pieces there's like a specific mm -hmm. order that's pretty good Usually you want mm -hmm. to develop your knights, because knights don't have a lot of options, so we, we kind of know where mm -hmm. they belong. Then yeah. bishops, because after a few moves, you know a good spot for your bishops. Mm -hmm. And then you want to castle and get your rooks into the game. And the queen generally comes last. So mm -hmm. starting with your queen is an exception to the opening development rules. Mm -hmm. When you start with the queen, the queen is vulnerable because it's too high value. So usually mm -hmm. you should hold off on that one. Right. So even though this looks like it, it at least tentatively follows your opening guidelines it's actually quite problematic mm -hmm. so that being said um what's a move for black that would just you know follow these rules in a nice way knight f6 or yeah, knight f6 knight... is perfectly good okay you develop your knight you're closer to castling and you control two center squares mm -hmm. that's all really good cool so the scholar's mate player who only knows this because they googled it one time will almost for sure play the move bishop c4 next mm -hmm. and this is quite sus because um i think it's pretty clear when you see them attacking all the light squares like one after the other and not yeah. like quickly to castling their king or moving their knights you you kind of know like they're, they're trying to do something so mm -hmm. let's see just a ridiculous move from black to illustrate white's idea. All right, it's white to play and mm -hmm. win in this position. Ah, okay, so then that's just bishop f7. And that's game over? Uh, as far as I can tell? Nope, they have a move. What should black play after bishop f7? Oh, then king has to move forward. Yeah, which is ugly, but it's not not lights out. Mm -hmm. they're surviving but when you see a move like bishop f7 it's very encouraging you should probably make a couple more candidate moves look at a couple more forcing options so what else could white mm -hmm. do that's forcing ah uh, yeah then just 
go to the same square with the queen. And that's that's game over. Looks like it. Yes, it is. Good. So this is the famous scholar's mate position. Mm -hmm. Um, if you ever attend a, a chess club in your in your area, you will probably at some point see someone kind of like sitting dejectedly, like looking around. Like in a in a daze <laughs> with this happening, and their opponent yeah. is like with their hands behind their head, very happy that the scholars <laughs> made its own yet again. Um, that person has probably been the same rating for the last fifty years. Whoever is doing the scholars meet, um, uh -huh. or it's their first tournament. It, it could really go either way. Um, yeah, fair. <laughs> so this is our scholars meet concept. This is what they really want. Mm -hmm. uh, a more common way that this will go down is someone will fail to follow the opening principles for a couple of moves, like mm -hmm. they might play like d6 because they're like i want to protect my pawn mm -hmm. and then the cunning scholars mate player might play bishop c4 and um black might do something like it's time for me to use my horse ride on horse and then like master <laughs> strikes so th that's that's typically how it will go okay <laughs> but knight of six more or less nips it in the bud Mm -hmm. Knight of six is the remedy for this particular scholar's mate iteration. Mm -hmm. And after okay. bishop c4, your your main task here is the same as in the in regular opening play. You want to develop your pieces in castle. So mm -hmm. let's play a couple of moves and let's see if I can trick you. Mm -hmm. What's your next move gonna be? Uh. Then would it just be bishop c5? That seems perfectly good. Let's say I play, for example, g4. That's all anyway. All right, now I play g5. Ah, okay. I, I don't know why I said that. Well, keep thinking. Okay. This is the kind okay, of thing so that people who do scholars may do. Just throw mm -hmm. their stuff at you. Mm -hmm. And then when it's over, they don't have anything else. So you just have to survive for a few moves. So if he takes the the rook, then I just take back with... The rook? No, the mean? the knight, then I take back with... Uh, I guess I'll take back with the queen, so I'm not exposing my king. That makes sense. Do you know the relative value of the pieces, though? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> what's the hierarchy? Uh... Pawn less than knight and bishop. I don't know if there's like a it, lot of difference between them. Okay, so there it turns. This is probably a really big thing for you. So mm -hmm. with most people will consider the pieces to have a fixed numeric value. Okay. This is not true, but it's a really good um, guiding line when you first start. So you can take mm -hmm. the pawn as the base unit. Let's just say it's one. Right. Right, we could, we could make it any number we want, but one is easy. Mm -hmm. The knights and bishops are about three times as good as a pawn. So if you sacrifice a bishop or a knight and you get three pawns, that's often pretty good. If you mm -hmm. trade a knight for a bishop, that's usually about equal. Mm -hmm. But if you give up your knight for a pawn or your bishop for a pawn, or even two pawns, that's usually not very good. Right. The rook is stronger than the bishop and the knight, but mm -hmm. not twice as good. So you might say five. Okay. If you trade your rook for a bishop and a knight that's usually a, a pretty good trade for you okay the queen is often considered to be nine so it's about three times as much as a minor piece yeah the yeah, yeah. And knight i've seen this pieces. in my computer mm -hmm. or versus computer games <laughs> and, and the king is infinite value because yeah. we consider losing the king to be the worst of all possible outcomes in the world mm -hmm. so there is some wiggle room like some people have gotten very academic and said the rook is worth five and a quarter. The bishop is worth <laughs> okay. three and a half. Um, the pawns on the edge of the board are worth 0.75. Um, the mm -hmm. queen is worth 10. <laughs> like, there, there's yeah. this kind of academic discussion sometimes. But in the end, it doesn't matter. You just have to know that certain kinds of material balances are, are better than others. Right. So I would not give up my knight for a pawn in this case. Okay. And this leads you to so... just one, one move that's good. Uh -huh. So the knight can go in all these different directions, but only one of them really makes sense. Yeah. The 
this is a situation where you can find the answer by elimination. So let's just pick one move to start, like knight h5. Yeah. What's wrong with that move? Uh, the queen just eats it. Right. How about this one? Also gets eaten by the queen. Yes. This one's not as bad as it looks, but you still shouldn't do it. What about this mm -hmm. one? Eh, it's poor trade. Yeah, it's a poor trade. It's just like leaving the knight there. It's like you're giving mm -hmm. up a move and losing your knight anyway. Bad. Yeah. How about this? Also bad. How yeah, come? you're just giving a free knight yeah, away. Yeah, completely free. I would take with the bishop to preserve my pawn structure. Mm -hmm. Although that's a minor consideration when you're winning a minor piece. Mm -hmm. How about this move? Looks safe. It's safe. We should play it. So this is our, our best option. Mm -hmm. it, it looks kind of bad. You're like, ooh, I'm moving backwards. Not good. I don't like backwards, <laughs> but yeah. it's perfectly good. It's nice. Okay. Um, you will come out on top because their their pieces are just very weirdly placed. In fact, right mm -hmm. now we're threatening to take this pawn, so they should probably defend it, like maybe like this. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. a discovered defense. Look out for sneaky things like that. Um, uh. But then from here, you can just wake up your pieces. Like, what what's a good move here for Blackwood? Um... Yeah, maybe just d5? Um, no. If you no, count that, the attackers and defenders, you'll see d5's not uh -huh. good. So try to make a okay. habit of counting those. Oh, so it should just be... Okay, so you shouldn't leave your pawns hanging like that if you're... If they're gonna be attacked by I don't know two three pieces, yeah. If you pu if you put it there attacked like several times, you don't really want that to happen. Sure. You might want to okay. prepare that move because it might be a good move, but it'll just take time mm -hmm. to make it work. Okay. Uh, then. Knight c six. Yeah, this is an excellent move. In fact, this move comes with a threat, a positional threat. It's it's not like you're mm -hmm. winning, but like it, it's a nice thing. If white goes ahead and plays something like h4, just disregarding mm -hmm. all opening principles once more, you mm -hmm. could either develop one more piece like this. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Um, right. Or you could try to give them problems immediately. Uh -huh. Yeah. And here there's, there are wrong answers to the question, what do you do with your queen? You know, we mm -hmm. want to take that one. So mm -hmm. let's, let's pretend that they do something like uh, queen e3. The worst mm -hmm. of all possible worlds. Uh, what should black do? You have a very strong move here. Mm. You have multiple, but there's one that's the best. Okay. The... Okay, so... The one I see that still continues to threaten the queen without being directly attacked by something, if there is that. <laughs> what move is it? Uh, never mind. That doesn't exist. What were you thinking about? Is it legal? <laughs> uh, it it was legal. It was just gonna get eaten by a pawn immediately. Oh, Sedge. Well, <laughs> just humor me. What what were you gonna say? <laughs> Uh, knight of five. Okay, knight of five. Yeah. It could get taken by a pawn, but actually, it has a consequence. Mm -hmm. If you play knight of five, mm -hmm. and they take it, Wait. you actually have a good move here still. Ah, okay. Then I'll just eat the queen. Right. This is called a discover attack. We move mm -hmm. this one out of the way to discover the queen. Mm -hmm. The problem with this one mm -hmm. is that they won't take the knight. What do you think white would actually do here? Mm hmm. Yeah, then the queen would just take the bishop instead. Yeah, the bishop doesn't have any protection. Otherwise, this would be mm -hmm. a, a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. um, an example of your idea succeeding might be this one. Because mm -hmm. you both discover an attack on the queen and protect the bishop. Oh, okay, yeah. But this is still not the best move. You have one that's way better yeah, than that. Yeah, still threatened by stuff. Um, yeah. Try the checks captures threats for this. Yeah, then I'll check at knight c2. Yeah. And how much material are you going to win? the queen right. or the rook but why would you ever pick the rook you'd probably take the queen <laughs> yeah so in terms of points how many points would you earn Let, let's say i just nine. do something silly you don't mm -hmm. actually earn nine because of their next move ah uh, yeah because then it's six yeah exactly so this is a good way to kind of evaluate your material mm -hmm. winning options you can just add up how many points you get subtract how many you lost and that mm -hmm. gives you a ballpark idea of how good your position is at the end of the mm -hmm. variation 
of course there are exceptions there are like infinite exceptions to that idea but it's a good place to start i would take okay. with the knight just to keep things spicy okay so this is also uh, a formation that's pretty common mm -hmm. you would think that it wouldn't be common because it's so bad for white but you know it, yeah. it's a thing and this is called okay. a royal fork because it attacks the entire royal family king queen and mm -hmm. whoever this guy is I don't know how it's related to the king and the queen, but, you know, somehow they're in the family, and it's it's a royal fork. He's the queen's secret lover. Yeah, probably. Paramour. So, mm -hmm. um, knight takes c2 is definitely the best move here. So, this forces them actually to retreat all the way. Mm -hmm. And this is nice, because it means that they wasted time in the opening, and you can start doing stuff like maybe you can prepare d5, that move that you wanted to play. You could play, like, mm -hmm. c6... And then, like, they play whatever, like, I don't know, maybe maybe they'll play, like, this one, and then you can go ahead and play that attacking mm -hmm. move. Attack the bishop, control the middle, very nice stuff. Okay. Okay, so this might seem like sort of a rabbit hole of, like, mm -hmm. lots of things that are maybe never going to happen, but trust me, these things are, are quite common. People will try to scholars meet you over and over again as long as you are rated below, like, 1500 late <laughs> like, it's gonna keep happening mm -hmm. okay <laughs> and they have many ways to attempt this nonsense mm -hmm. i think that the most dangerous way that someone can attempt a scholars meet you is like this mm. this is called the lightning attack because mm -hmm. it's sort of like a faster version of the scholars mate right and uh well just to illustrate the danger what do you think black should play here so the pawn in the F file is already pinned, so you can't move that. You but... wouldn't want to, but yeah, it's also pinned. Mm -hmm. I would still probably go uh, knight F6 to attack the queen. Right, and this is one of the, the pitfalls. What's white's mm -hmm. best move here? Hmm... Would it be bishop c4? No, because when you play knight f6, you actually have a threat yourself. Oh. Ah, You're going okay. to... Well, why did you choose knight f6? So, I was thinking of uh, setting up for a check that way, but... There's something more direct. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think it should be? Um... Checks, captures... that work? I'm thinking of uh, queen f7, but... Oh, it's black's turn, right? Just... We're, we're thinking about, like, why not bishop c4. Oh, for black. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I think you can flip the board for yourself, too, if that helps you to uh, uh -huh. keep an eye on things. I generally don't flip the board ever, but like it's up to you. It looks like I can't, so this is fine too. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> not always. No um, I didn't mean to, you know, hype no, no. flipping the board for it to not even exist. Uh huh. Um. Wait. So you're asking why not move the bishop? Yeah. It turns out there's a big okay. problem with that. White had a much better move. Bishop c4 is mm -hmm. a mistake. Oh, okay. So, the reason you chose bishop c4 is we just saw that there's this checkmate mm -hmm. threat, right? Right. When I'm thinking about defending my king, the first thing I think about all the time is captures. Mm -hmm. Because that's the mo usually the most aggressive way to solve your problem forever. Like, just capture the piece mm -hmm. that's bothering you. So here, yeah. can you capture one of the pieces? I guess just go directly for the, the pawn at f7. No, but for black. That's just Black's turn. For black? Uh, yeah. yeah, then just take the queen. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Sorry if that was a little disorienting. So, yeah, <laughs> no a, a, a lot of the time in the lessons, I'm going to switch perspectives over and over again because mm -hmm. um, every position is like an interplay of what white's trying to do with what black's trying to do. It's never like I'm, we're going to learn just white and then learn just black. They always have to go together. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so knight of six has a point in that you want to take the queen. 
the mm -hmm. the problem is that white has a forcing move here that's stronger than bishop c4 so let's mm. go back to try okay. to figure out what that was oh uh then just take the pawn at e5 and right. then there's check exactly so this is this is much stronger it turns out that black is actually better here but in practice for people who are just starting out um mm -hmm. once they lose this pawn they usually just crumble so we need <laughs> we need to avoid that but if you ever sure. find yourself in this situation like you know you learned this you forgot it this happened mm -hmm. like don't hold your head in your hands block with the yep. bishop because this helps you mm -hmm. to castle quickly mm -hmm. and then the next couple of moves try to like chase that queen maybe take this pawn play d5 mm -hmm. just get all your pieces out as fast as possible okay this is usually a good way to recover from losing some material develop mm -hmm. extremely rapidly and start creating problems for them so anyway um knight f6 is a mistake because of queen takes mm -hmm. e5 we can do yep. better so let's try again, just to illustrate more like why this move is dangerous. What else could you try? Uh, G6. This is probably the most common mistake. And, <laughs> okay. and it's also the reason they call it lightning attack. So what's, uh, yeah, because then you can still do the same thing. <laughs> right. And then what's your yeah. next move? Let's say I block with a queen just for fun. Yeah. Okay. What do you do now? That's white. White. Mm. I'm inclined to say trade queens because the puzzles seem to really like that. But nope. I don't think that's it. Not this time. I would trade queens yeah. if I could take another free piece on the next move, but not here. Oh, okay. Then I'll, I'll just fuck up the back rank. Yes, with this one, right? Yeah. Good. So the reason they call it lightning attack is because of this lightning bolt pattern. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I always tell mm. people. So I okay. might just be like speaking this into reality. But anyway, yeah. um, this is a very, very common sequence of moves. Um, mm -hmm. Once one of my students a while ago, he was already a, a quite strong player when this happened. Um, another coach that I used to hang out with challenged him to a bullet game, which means one minute for both sides. Oh, no. And he, he played the lightning attack and, and took his rook like this. And then my student resigned and we were laughing so much about it because he probably <laughs> hadn't even seen this since like he'd been in a beginner class. And, yeah. And somehow he fell for it again, like many years later. <laughs> um, but no strong player would ever, ever fall for this. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mean that it's like beneath attempting the the scholar's mate a couple times for yourself okay. just to like you know have fun with it as well. See it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, scholar's mate really doesn't work with black. It's just way too slow. Usually they're gonna castle yeah. before you even can create one threat. Okay. okay. So g six is no good. So they want to take this pawn really badly. That's a hint for what the mm -hmm. best move should be for black. So, mm. what do you think? D6? D6 is pretty good. The downside for D6, though, is that you can't get your bishop out to control the center anymore. Ah, uh, okay. So, it's it's okay, but you can do better. Bishop D6? <laughs> bishop D6 has the downside that it blocks this pawn, which means your uh, bishop can't okay. get out. So, look out for those things. You're getting warmer, though. Okay. Spicy hot. You're almost there. Let's... We can develop a piece without blocking anything and protect e5. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'll give you a hint. When we were looking at how to block the check on this diagonal before, yeah. it's the piece that you forgot. <laughs> Do you remember? You told me no. you told me you could block with a pawn, you could block with a bishop, you could block with a queen, and you forgot the, uh, forgot the knight. Uh, so okay, sure. Oh, so is that just knight c six? Yes, it's just this. Mm -hmm. This is a good move. Protects the pawn, and you're also lining up this future idea to go take this pawn. Mm -hmm. So, um. I actually noticed in, in your games, too, that you often will miss opportunities to develop these knights in good ways, similar to this. So pay special attention to this one, even though it seems like kind of basic. Okay. I think you just have a small bias against the knights, um, which is easy to I, fix. I think it's because, like, I learned one opening, mm -hmm. and then I've been trying to use it. And then, otherwise, like, before this, I was always opening with both pawns on... Yeah, D E four, D E five, and both knights. Okay. Um, one thing that maybe deterred you from doing that is whenever you mm -hmm. open with both, 
Mm -hmm. uh, maybe go back to the opening development chapter. We, we, we'll we'll yeah. switch back to that in a second. Mm -hmm. So if you are if you are playing white and you immediately play d4 without support from the knights, yeah, you'll usually get into some weird situations where your queen's out too early. And we'll see mm -hmm. more about this probably next week. Usually sure. if your queen's out too early, it disrupts your ability to finish development because you have to start defending mm -hmm. your queen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you if you want to follow that same strategy because it, it it does follow these opening principles, do the knights first. Yeah. Like this. Okay. And then you can go for a move like this. Yeah. Because now when they take, what piece are you going to take with? Uh, the knight on the right side. Yes, on the king side. Yeah. So this is this is a better way for you to try to develop your pieces. If you bring the knights first, the same strategy works, even if they contest the center, mm -hmm. with e five. Okay, now coming back to this, yeah, just be aware that the knight, don't be too biased against those knights. Yeah. All right, so we successfully defended one of white's tricks. Now, they can threaten checkmate right away. What, what do you think white should do to try to threaten the checkmate? In chess, a threat means a move where on the next move they can do something that's useful. Mm -hmm. It has to be on the very next move to be considered a threat. Okay, so then would this be the bishop c4 yeah it's bishop c4 so this threatens checkmate right here with the queen mm -hmm. so now here we have a new challenge how do we defend this one So I see that the 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 king is kind of boxed in by uh whatever's to the left and right of it right now. Yeah. I can't move the pawn because then I'll it, just die. You also don't want to. <laughs> like we've already yeah. seen that's not so great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the f pawn is the only guess... problem that has uh, the f pawn is the only pawn that has this kind of problem. By the way, like we don't mm -hmm. have any kind of general. Uh, bias against the other pawns. Sure. At least not in the opening. Okay. So then would I just move either the queen or the bishop to uh, e7? Uh, well, let's start with bishop e7. What do you think white will do mm -hmm. after that? Does it solve your problem? Nope. <laughs> no, they'll play queen f7. Yeah. The end. Good yep. game. You shake hands. One mm -hmm. of us cries. <laughs> queen e7, it actually stops it. Okay. But it's not perfect. No. The problem with queen e7 is that it's obstructing your bishop. Mm -hmm. And in addition, white can change their strategy and play knight c3 and knight d5. Because mm -hmm. you are now kind of stooping down to white's level and developing your queen too early as well. Right. So we should try to hold back on that until the, the moment of clarity. Okay. So there's another move that defends it. We still didn't find it yet. It's not a queen move. It's not a bishop move. Okay. Ah, okay. Knight uh, h6. Knight h6 works temporarily, but you're developing away from the center, and mm -hmm. this opens up a new possibility. Let, let's play, like, one move. You know, let's say I play d4. Mm -hmm. What's your next move? Mm. I'm probably inclined to just take... With... With... Uh, the one at e5. Okay. Now I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. What's your move now? And then I'll take back with uh, g7. And I will checkmate you. Ah. So okay. look out for this trick. <laughs> when your knight is yeah. on the edge, it's very easy mm -hmm. to go attack it with the bishop who hasn't moved yet. Okay. So that's one of the downsides of being on the edge. Your knight is less mobile than this bishop. Sure. But if you go here, what's white going to do? It's not better than knight h6. It's worse. The same thing, just free checkmate. Yep, exactly. So we've sort of narrowed it down. Mm -hmm. When you can't capture one of the attacking pieces, usually blocking is a good option. So can we block the okay. bishop or the queen? Yes. So we can just take another pawn out at g7? To g6, right? Yeah, this is the best move. 
Okay. Earlier, this move was bad because it allowed queen takes e5. Mm -hmm. But now that e5 is defended, it's the best move. Mm -hmm. It blocks the queen forever, and it mm -hmm. allows you to play bishop g7. Mm -hmm. But white, white is not done with their tricks. This is this is almost like the last thing that they can try, and we can probably wrap up after we see this one. Queen uh -huh. f3 threatens checkmate again. Yeah. So how should we stop the checkmate? Once you reach this point in a chess game, you don't really have anything to worry about anymore from the scholar's mate. It's pretty much over. Mm -hmm. mm. So they're attacking f7 again. Correct. So I need to find a way to either support it or... Or block. Or block. Generally, yeah. you'll have capture, block, mm -hmm. or run away as your options to defend any piece. When the piece is not the king, you have the additional option to protect. So there's then only really four. Then it's safe now to go f5 or. So it's funny that you mentioned f5. F5 is is an idea that I shared in a video, and I called it like a a novelty to oh. make, <laughs> to to make this viable for black even against uh -huh. top players. But yeah. there's something that's easier to play. F5 is very good, okay. but <laughs> but there's also something simple. Mm -hmm. And simple is good. The idea with F5 is something outrageous. It's like they take it and you throw yeah. a knight D4 and you're counterattacking them. <laughs> it's it's a sacrifice and it's insane. Um, okay, sure. Uh, then is it just knight f6? Yep, knight f6. We finish our development, we control the center, and we don't get checkmated. And just one little thing that's icing on the cake. If they try to play g4 to play g5 and chase your knight away to give a checkmate, now is the right time to play knight d4 and just end their whole attack. We saw this in another variation where they have to play queen d1 and that's it. They don't have any other oh. options. Like if they play queen e3, okay. we get the same family fork. Mm -hmm. And other options are just inferior. So this is a really good solution is play knight d4. Okay. So this is probably like everything you ever wanted to know about scholar's mate and lightning attack and fool's mate mm -hmm. and more. And cool. I, I think you're armed with not just the 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 point value for the pieces, um, but also some general opening principles to help you just pick good opening moves no matter what opening you play. Mm -hmm. So now you can just like try whatever you want as long as you're controlling the center, developing your pieces, and castling pretty soon. You're you're doing really mm -hmm. well. Cool. Um, I also encourage you to try Scholar's Mate a couple times. It's it's not a great main weapon. It's like kind of surprising at a low level, but uh -huh. um, it it can be fun a couple of times. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions about this before we wrap up and just chill? Uh, I'll let you know if I have any. I never have any when people ask me directly. Okay. I'll send you yeah. a um. I'll send you a a worksheet that's based on what we did today, so you can practice mm -hmm. during the week. Great. Thanks. All right. Cool. I'll just stop the recording now, and we can just vibe. Alrighty. All right.